Okay, well, that's a silly little song that I decided to perform. I don't want to tell you how long I had to. <laughs> I had to practice that. But, uh, yeah, I figured out how to play that song. You might recognize it. But uh, I wanted to show you guys this little, um, this little, I guess, impromptu keyboard, little quick project that I put together um, on the Arduino. This is the Arduino Uno back here. Um, let's look at the breadboard first. And uh, I covered hooking up buttons to the Arduino in the last video. So um, it's actually Arduino toolbox number seven, I believe. So if you want to go back and look at that, you can. But I've connected all these buttons in that same fashion. So um, let me zoom in on one of them. We'll talk about it briefly. The way I've got these buttons hooked up, um, I've got the button, of course, bridging across here. And in the back behind the jumper, there's a resistor. The resistor is a pull down resistor 10K going to ground. And then on the other side of the button, we have uh, five volts. So whenever the button's depressed, it, the five volts goes across the button and goes into the uh, Arduino on the digital input here. I have a digital input hooked up on each one of those yellow lines. So, uh, yeah, that's how I have it hooked up. The, let's see, we have, what, eight? Eight different keys. Going to eight digital inputs here. Uh, the other, let's see, what are the other things we have hooked up on this board? Um, I've got the power rails hooked up. I have five volts DC coming here from the Arduino. And then I have ground connected here on the uh, power rail. And then, of course, you can see all of eight resistors are hooked up to the ground. And then I have little jumpers of just bare connector wire uh, hooking each one of them up to the 5-volt rail. So that, that's all the uh, breadboard connections. And then we also have a speaker. This is a uh, speaker from a Snap Circuits kit that I have going to ground and to pin 11, which is a PWM pin, which your speaker needs to be hooked up to if you're gonna use the tone command with it. Um, this speaker does have an internal resistor, so I don't have to use one in my project. You may have to use one in yours. So uh, yeah, this was really fun. It took me, uh, I'd say about an hour all told between uh, putting this together real quick and writing the code. So let's take a look at the code real quick. Okay, this is the code that I actually have uploaded on the Arduino board already. I thought we would take a minute to take a look at it. Um, up, up at the top, these are global variables I've set. Uh, speaker pin equals 11. That's just where I have the speaker connected on the uh, Arduino. It's going to digital pin 11, which as I stated a minute ago is a PWM pin. Um, I have a delay value equals 100 here. Um, I put this here because I do have a delay of 100 milliseconds whenever I release the key. The only reason I did that was to make it a little smoother when I would go from one key to the next. It was cutting off like it seemed really quick. As soon as I would release a button, it seemed a little abrupt. So I decided to make it go a little longer without interfering with the play of the next key. Um, and instead of putting 100 in each delay statement, because I have like eight of them, I decided to make a delay value variable and assign it a value up top in case I wanted to change it later. I could just do it one time. All right, in the setup, we're going to um, set our pin, but we're gonna do our pin mode statements for each one of the digital inputs. We're going three through 10, as you can see here. And then we're gonna, just to be safe, we're gonna digital write low to each one of them. Um, I was having trouble for a little while. It, the digital write low shouldn't be necessary. I was having some trouble though at one point, so I tried that to clean it up and um, I ended up 
ended up just moving things around. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and then next we have pin mode, speaker pin, setting it as an output. So that's going to be pin 11 where the speaker is. That's everything in the setup. Now, here's the loop. And it's kind of long, but it's really a lot of case statements, case switch statements, which we haven't really talked about before. But uh, let's take a look at the loop. Uh, at the top of the at the top of the loop, I set current tone equals zero. I'll explain that more in a moment. Um, the int current tone is going to hold the value of it's going to hold the value of which button has just been pressed. So if I press this button, it's going to hold zero. I'm sorry, it's going to hold three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so uh, we're going to pull each one of the buttons to see if they are currently pressed. So we're going to do a for statement from three to ten. And we're going to do an if digital read of I, it's going to read whatever button it's on in the loop is high. Then we're going to make that the current tone, current tone equals I. All right, and then now it's a real simple program, really. Switch, we're going to do a switch case statement. The switch is going to be current tone, which we set up here. And I have all of these different cases. If the current tone is three, then I'm going to play a speaker. I'm going to play a tone on the speaker pin of 262. And then I have that delay of a delay value there. And then the break, if it, if it does execute this statement, if the case is three, it'll execute these two commands and then it'll break, meaning it'll skip the rest of the case statements because it's already found the case that we're looking for. So um, the, the number is 262, and then case four is 294, which is D, and then 349, which is six. Um, these, these numbers, I just pulled up from a chart. I looked up um, musical note frequencies. These are the notes in Hertz. For each one of these cases so c is 262 d is 294 e is 330 and so on and and then i start over at c again with uh the last one right here so and then i set a default um of no tone and then the modifier there is speaker pin and um i don't even know if that is running i don't I think I, I, I think I'm kind of uh, messing up that case switch statement. I don't think it's running because let's try this. Let's see if it works if I comment that out. All right. Huh? No, it doesn't work. See if I comment that out, it does it works exactly. It actually works. Uh, the code works exactly like I intended. If the default is not no tone, then it's going to continue to play the tone of the last button that was pressed. So I do need to leave that in. I'll put it back in now. And then I told you I was going to, I guess I should, I guess I should uh, put remarks, more remark statements. Cause now I'm trying to remember why I set int current tone to zero. And I can't not remember. <laughs> um, I don't know if current tone needs to be set to zero every time. It actually does. Okay. Yeah, it does need to be set to zero. Because once a button has been played, then if I don't set it to zero at the top, uh, when it get, loops back around, then it'll still hold that same value. Let's see if that's the case. Oh, I still need to define the variable. Actually, you know what? I, I think, I don't think I need to set it to zero. Okay, no, that's true. All right, I did need to set it to zero because it does hold this, the previous value and it won't stop playing, so. Okay, talking through this, sorry. This is some of the stuff I went through when I was 
coming up with the code. I had to find little fixes for glitches. Another interesting problem that I have during this project, um, and I mean, you just learn, and I haven't figured out exactly what was going on yet. I initially had, I would initially had these inputs going to digital pin zero through, what would that be? Zero through seven. But I found that no matter what, what I did, um, I could not get pin one to behave. Like it would read, it was very erratic. It would, it would, it was like flip flopping on and off, on and off. And I checked the pull, pull down resistor. I changed out the um, jumper wire. I even got a second Arduino and used that in place of this one, or actually vice versa. And the problem was still there. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. It's nothing wrong with the breadboard or the button or any of that other stuff because as soon as I moved it over uh, to starting at three, going through 10, problem went away. So I was having some type of problem with pin one. I don't know what the problem is. So yeah, but I'm happy with this project. It worked out great. And I even learned how to play this little tune. <laughs> so I uh, hope you guys picked up a little something from this and I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.